Lizzie and I run Pippin and Gile. We run bushcraft and sort of foraging courses and we've got woodlands in sort of Mid Wales, Breckenridge and South London, which is the one I'm in today. So charcoal and why charcoal? So kind of the first thing I always think is that what is charcoal? We all use it, um, but do we actually really know what it is? So if we think about first fire, so for fire we need three things. We need oxygen, we need heat and we need fuel. Okay, and as you can see in the other video I've got, we've got our source of heat. Um, but for charcoal, we want to make sure that we don't have oxygen. Okay, so we're going to burn off all of the volatile gases and the water and anything else. And we're going to end up with a charred material, um, which becomes charcoal. And that then burns at a much higher temperature than kind of just wood on its own, which is really useful. So if we hadn't worked out charcoal, we wouldn't have been able to work out how to mix copper and tin to make bronze. Um, nor would we have been able to get the iron out of the iron ore to make to start the Iron Age. So if we look at the history of charcoal, it does go back to the very sort of early roots of sort of the evolution of human beings. Um, so it's a really, really old, old primitive skill. Um, we're not doing it in a particularly primitive fashion, doing it in an old painting. Willow makes very good sort of pencils. So Willow, if you want to draw with it, Willow is sort of, it seems to be the best material to be drawing with. We're going to head into camp and we're going to start setting up our charcoal. So as you can see, we've got our fire going nicely. To block our oxygen, we're gonna put all of our material inside this tin, pop the lid on. However, gases expand when it's hot. So if we just put the lid on and we don't put a hole in it, all that's gonna happen is the lid's gonna fire off and hurt some more. Okay, so if you haven't got one of our kits, the first thing you're gonna need to do is carefully just hammer through all in your lid. Let your lid back off. Right, and then we need to start chucking our, cutting our willow or any other sort of dry sticks. Willow's really good, especially if you want to be drawing with it later. So we're going to cut our willow to size. So I tend to line it up. If it's on the inside here and the outside there, keep my fingers nice and far back and just cut it to size. Okay, if I can get it sitting nice and flat inside the tin, all right, Depending what I want to use it for, if I'm going to use it for charcoal in the fire, it doesn't really matter what shape it is. If I want to use it for charcoal sticks for drawing, I want to try and keep it as straight as I can. Okay, I know I'm going to use some of this for drawing. And therefore, once I've got a nice little layer in the bottom, I'm going to find my trusty bag of sawdust. And I'm just going to put in a nice layer of sawdust and just build those layers up and up. So I've got that filled with layers of willow and the sawdust and I'm just going to get the lid on top, squeeze that really nice and tight and I'm now going to make sure I've got the ability to bung this hole. I don't want to bung this hole until I take it off the fire later but, but if I try and make the bung for the fire at that point it's hot and doesn't work very well. So again the willow is quite useful for that. If it's not too snug, it doesn't matter too much. But what you don't want is, as we said, the oxygen's gonna, or all of the air in here, including the oxygen, is going to be expelled, along with the volatile gases. Once we take it off the heat, if the oxygen comes straight back inside, as it cools and draws air in, all that happens is it sets fire. The fire then starts and we get embers burning. So we want to be able to plug that up. But we don't want to put it on fire like that. So once it's full, with your handy giant gauntlets we're going to pick it up and we're going to pop it in the fire so we're going to pop this in the fire so what i want to do coming into the fire 
I'm just going to nestle it right into the middle. Try and get it sitting upright. Being aware that they're not completely flame proof. And just tap a little bit more with round it just to keep that fire going really strong. And we'll notice quite quickly that it will start to smoke. You will also notice that the smoke coming out the top might set fire. As we said, the volatile gases are being given off, that's not a problem. Uh, because we've got that expansion, the flames will all be coming up, they won't be going back down. It's a little bit like your gas um, burner at home, so you don't get the flames going through the gas at the bottom, through the gas pipes, they only burn when they come into contact with the oxygen. Yeah, no, there will be lots of smoke. And if you take a sort of flaming twig to that smoke, it will, you'll have a flamethrower. Um, and as I said, that that's all your volatiles coming off. Mine is just about ready. So, using the welding gloves, I'm gonna take this out of the fire. And actually, the bottom of the tin is blowing red hot. So, I'm gonna pop that down there. And we talked about putting that bung in. I'm gonna pop that bung in now. If I left that bung off now, or I take the lid off now, it's going to, it won't burst into flame, but it will burst into ember yeah. in a very sort of controlled manner that charcoal burns in. But we want our charcoal to stay charcoal. Um, so as soon as it stops smoking, uh, we want to take it off the heat and then bung it up and leave it to cool. Got a really nice collection there of sawdust and charcoal coming out. Okay, and this one, I did leave it on for quite a long time. Has burnt nearly all the way through, but you can still see there are a few. This one's got a little bit of brown tip to the end still. If you take yours off absolutely after it's finished smoking, this is what you're gonna get. If you take it off a little bit early, you'll get sort of a bit of a mix between slightly browned to full charcoal. Um, if you get that, that's not a problem leave anything that isn't done, pop it back in the tin, and next time it will be done. <laughs>